Water is really alive. We are composed of water. We can't live without water. And each of us is trying to be closer to water. Water is the source of life. We are in the water while being in the womb. It is water that we first take after mother's milk. Water is always alive for us, you know. The biggest problem in space is the lack of water. Water makes up about 70% of the Earth, so I think the best we can do during the marathon is just to use this resource. We feel water like no other. We feel each tenth of degree of water temperature. We feel whether water is heavy or light. Water is absolutely alive and you can feel it when you're about to dive in at breakneck speed. Probably I have never had the same water entry. Water can be soft, hard, biting. Learning to swim when I was really, really young and then going on to learn to dive and diving's been part of my life. Everybody, everybody knows that it's more than 70% of man, it's water. You know that water is life. Without water, on this planet, there will be no life, for sure. Something that I do every single day, I'm in water, and uh, I love being in the water. You feel free, it's, you feel like you're floating, like you're flying, you know, gravity doesn't affect you, and uh, it's a way that I can express myself and feel at ease in the water, and uh, a break from the rest of the world of all the crazy uh, social media and your phone, and you just leave everything behind, you get in the pool and you're on your own, and uh, I really enjoy that. Water is our life the life of the people that love swimming. And the water, you know, our world is water. Life is water. Nobody can be alive without water. And water is the main issue for this city. When many, many centuries ago, ago, the founder uh, to Olga to start the city of Tatarstan, the water was the main resource. And the main resource not only to drink and to live, but also to build a civilization. Kazan looks just perfect. It is a beautiful European multinational city, you know with its own cultural diversity. A lot of historical sites and monuments have been preserved. It's such an historic Russian city. I love uh, the city of Kazan. I thought it was bigger, sincerely, at the beginning, but it's really nice. I love uh, the Kremlin, the city center, the, the river, and during night as well, uh, you have a nice view. People is really nice with me and with everybody, so. Kazan is a sports capital. We increasingly hear it from not only our guests and participants of sports forums, but from the president, Mr. Vladimir Putin, has announced Kazan as a sports capital of the country. Kazan is without any doubt today an international sports city. They organize a very important event, international events here. We are hosting one of the biggest international sporting events. 4.5 billion people will be watching it. And of course, our youth could see that similar young people are winning at the World Championships, securing a berth at the Olympics. It will give impetus to the development and high performance sports. Everyone will swim. Everyone will try to be like their sports idols. My name is Artemy Tukarov. I am seven years old. I have been doing diving for two years. I want to be a world champion and two times Olympic champion. It is very difficult to become an athlete. When I look at it then, it seems that it's easy to make a dive, but in fact it requires long training. Uh, when the world championship is held in Kazan, I want to meet with Dmitry Sautin and Artemy Sredchenko. 
I want to shake their hands and get their autograph. I look at him, at Artem Sudachenko, and think, how does he make such dives? I would like to do it like him. Well, half twist or forward somersault. And I want to train more, about five or six hours. Sport builds character. I think that each of us, be it a child or an adult, has to be a fan of sport because it teaches you to overcome yourself. Today, Kazan Arena is a symbol of sports Kazan. It's our highlight and we are proud of it. It was a great challenge for all of us, for organizing committee in Kazan and for FINA. But I think finally we have a good, con a good decision and good planning and I think it's going to be something outstanding remaining in history because it's the first time in FINA, the World Championships, that the venue it's in the football stadium. Speaking in terms of effectiveness then, if we had built a new swimming pool, or to be more precise, two ones with a capacity of 12,000 spectators, believe me, today we would be talking about a completely different budget and sums of money. Having such a developed sports infrastructure in Kazan, it would be quite difficult to operate such a venue. Today Russia is used to surprising the world, and so now we show the planet that aquatics championships can actually be held at the football stadium. In fact, this is a simple construction, but it has its unique features since the venue was located at the existing embankment. We try to do all the construction works so as not to disrupt logistics and disturb people either. The project is very complicated in terms of technologies, techniques and solutions. There is a large number of new solutions, a large number of people involved in this project. But I hope that finally we will get a very good and attractive picture. My emotion about the final result is uh, absolutely uh, proud. I'm proud about this because uh, you feel in part of something bigger than you, bigger than just the pool, just a pool structure. It's not just a water tank, but it's a pool where athletes can uh, do in the games and records and medals. For the first time, the symbol of the World Championships, as well as the symbol and brand of the International Swimming Federation, were taken to the International Space Station. The capsule reached the height of 400 kilometers and even 430 sometimes. The capsule was filled with the water from the beautiful Kazanka River, which I took on board. I am a cosmonaut and have spent half a year with the capsule in orbit, half a year with the water of life from the Kazanka River. Good luck, friends! Having looked at the map of Kazan city and suburbs, we realized that if we put sports pictograms into the map, then we could get quite an interesting and attractive logo. Of course, winners, prize winners, will be awarded gold, silver and bronze medals. The medals contain the name of the event, name of the International Swimming Federation, our logo, which is depicted against the background of blue water, that also represents the championships, aquatic sports and the International Swimming Federation. Hello, hello, could you give me the tickets for the high diving and diving, please? Our strong point is, first of all, clear and accurate organization of competition. Every day is scheduled from morning till evening, what we're doing at 9 a.m., what we're doing at midnight, what tasks we set. We are always ready because it's a good opportunity for us to change attitudes to Russia, to change attitudes to Tatarstan, to change attitudes to our capital. We will use this opportunity to show the athletes what Russia is, what Tatarstan is, and the way we welcome our guests.
I decided to be a volunteer because of, I had a great experience two years ago here on university in Kazan. It's quite the same bus now. <laughs> and last year in Sochi on Olympics, I also had a great experience. And I really love Russia at all. So I have many dear friends here in Kazan, especially. Something like that. I want to say a big hello to Salavat Fakhrudino, he's very popular in Serbia. <laughs> of course they create a welcoming atmosphere, an atmosphere of hospitality. It certainly pleases us, especially as the organizers. It pleases all client groups, all the participants and the guests who come here. This is the Kaban Lake. There is Tata gold on the bottom of it. The legend says they have hidden it here. Well, let's go and find it. Today, these guys are truly the best of the best. They are high-level specialists who speak several foreign languages, know the history of the city and sports, related information. They are divided into functional areas, and each of them is more than just a volunteer in their particular area, I would say. That is why, of course, we place a bet on them. I said to came uh, to Kazan because it's a really good experience for volunteering. They represent 20 regions and 10 countries of the world. We have a vast geography, more than 500 people are the volunteers who came from other cities and other countries. The fact that the Institute of Volunteering, which we created for 2013, exists and works today, makes us proud. Who is a volunteer? I'm a volunteer. We will be the first to greet all the people that will come to our championships. We will tune and charge them emotionally. It's a huge thrill, anticipation of an incredible event. Yes, and then silence. And then you start waking, waking and waking, little by little. You know, a person goes through some particular way throughout his life. And perhaps you can compare this way to the road whether an individual realizes it or not, but he is always searching for something. And I call it the search of the source. When you reach this source, the origin, you understand that the importance and the magic power of the source doesn't matter so much anymore. But it's the way you have passed to reach it that really matters. Working with this team is not only a pleasure, but also hard work. Great work for half a year. I feel like a tiny part of a great mechanism. It's very nice because when the team is close-knit, you feel an integral part of it, not an alien in an open space. Everything is very harmonious and it is very nice. For me, the number of lighting devices, the number of projectors is not so important. What is really important is that all of those things help spectators to perceive the show. If you look at the site, it is very close to the audience. I try to get the participation effect from each spectator so that he has a feeling of everything that is happening to him. I am very thrilled in anticipation of such a great event. I'm agitated that we'll be dancing during all nine days. That is more than a week. I'm anxious that we will dance in the water. I'm concerned about whether we will have time to prepare, but I believe that we will do everything to make our country and our republic proud of us. We are in Kazan. <laughs> Having arrived here now at the World Championships, I realize that I have come here and I feel at home. Nothing changes. Everybody is kind and open, and you want to come here again and again. It's uh, an amazing city. When we arrive, it's just impression. 
everything impressionist because it's brand new, it's clean, it's organized, it's uh, pretty, pretty beautiful. Anna said that and I agree, you can make an Olympic game here. I'm very uh, happy with Kazan. I, I think it's a very, very beautiful city. It's for me a lot nicer than Moscow. I think it's very um, clean and bright and people are very warm and friendly. The village creates an ambience which the athletes and, fed and federations and all the officials, they appreciate it very much. We have people living in the hotels, so we found out how, the, how good is the village and everybody then want to move to the village because of this fantastic uh, ambience. Happy the, the, the athletes that living in, in the village. The meals was extraordinary. I was to time, uh, have all kind of meal. The, this can to give an example of union because they know a new friends of the different countries. And then it's important the religion, the races, a big social inclusion that give the sport in one village more. When a dish was being developed, all the chefs who are now in the project were involved in it. We made the dishes with them all together. We adjusted so-called food samples, tasted them, tested their colour, smell and texture. We thought whether to add anything in food or to try new ideas. Therefore, there are very few truly classic recipes. Uh, I have yet to try Tasa food, um, but uh, the food I have had so far has been amazing. I love Tata food. I, um, every day in the, the village dining room, they have the little triangles with the meat or the potatoes and everything inside. So that's always what I get to um, go to eat first. <laughs> For the first time in our World Championships, uh, we have this type of accommodation. For the moment, over 190 countries have applied for participation. It is about 16,000 participants, athletes and coaches. And the city is planning to host more than 100,000 guests. Kazan is ready. We are ready to host this event. The 16th FINA World Championship is declared open. The more important is the mind and have a genetical good condition. For be champion, you must do an effort every day, but with happiness. Because being champion of swimming, you must train in 
easily five, six hours, four days. You are in many moments alone, only the water that you look in, that you felt in your body. When you feel you are tired and you feel, oh, I need to back home, uh, get in the bed and sleep a bit, I thinking about it, I have some goals to need to accomplish. And uh, I thinking always that uh, I have some event. You must think that there's a lot of athletes in the world that want the same thing that you want. It's not only you doing, oh, I'm doing a big effort, but there's a lot of athletes around the world doing that effort too. So you must, you want more than then and want to pass through the pain, pass through the parties and everything that you miss for your dream, for your goal, for your sport. Swimming, swimming is, 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 is a passion, is loving the water. I try to enjoy the races or, and, and of course when I jump in the water, I would like to be the best. Championship title would uh, and has meant a lot to me. Um, it's one of the pinnacles in our sport in swimming and becoming a world champion is an indescribable feeling. It's uh, something that every athlete dreams about and you work extremely hard and, and if you're able to reach this level, it's, it's nice that all your, your blood, sweat and tears and sacrifices over the year have, have paid off. So I think at this championship, we're all working hard. We're all uh, looking for the top uh, place to become world champion and uh, yeah, we hope we do well. I feel like I have a special relationship with the water. When you dive in, it's a, it's a, it's a, I can't describe it in words. It's a feeling that you have. You feel it. That's my job. That's my job now to to take him aside and to go slowly, slowly, or to shout at him. Not necessarily because he's world champion and I don't shout at him. I tell him what to do sometimes, he's still my son. So when he gets under pressure, you know, and he's in a bad mood or he doesn't want to train, I have to try to slowly, slowly manip manipulate him and motivate him to, to keep going. That's the job of the father. The championships are actually on television in my country, which is something that cannot be said about every championships. Because of Ryan Lochte, Missy Franklin, and Katie Ledecky, there's an audience in the United States for swimming. Well, we cover the competition from our own, our own booth, and we are right on the finish line. Our commentating booth uh, is a fantastic position, and we are able to cover the competition um, beautifully, and, and again, I think that is a testament to FINA. And the FINA organization has been so kind and so welcoming to all the media and try to make it as easy as possible for the media. Television uh, EBU, our partner, together with Panorama, the Russian company, I think they have done an outstanding job. The feedback I get from the professionals around the world, that was probably one of the best television production of the World Championships. It is hard to imagine, but we are expecting more than 4 billion television viewers. For nearly a month, they will say, Kazan, Tatarstan, Russia, in all languages of the world, on all five continents. For this World Championships, um, they were all at home but it's a 10 hour time difference. So they stayed up in the middle of the night and had a little, a little party, a watching, a watching party. So they all made uh, breakfast and watched together. The championships for me is um, coming together and showcasing the talent that everybody has, the passion that we have, which is swimming or aquatic. We just want trying to see who's the, the best in the world. First of all, athletes should have respectful attitudes towards each other. It is very important in the course of a marathon because there is a lot of physical contact between us during the competition. Competitors shouldn't become 100% foe to you. You should respect him as well, and those who are close to you should respect you. 
like sometimes over two hours. So it's a big mental game. Uh, you have ups and downs. So it's all about riding those ups and downs and staying calm and really believing in yourself till the end. Because you, I, I mean, I even doubt myself in a race, um, but it's all about overcoming those doubts. The athlete needs more than a coach and their relationship is important because you can work together for more time. Coaches and athletes that fighting all the time, they, they stay together, they get good results but for a short time, not for a long time. You know, you grow up with these children and it's something you, they're part of you. Um, you get to know them like your own child. You have to know them, you've got to know their characteristics, their idiosyncrasies, because it helps you when they're down, you've got to lift them up. When they get too excited, you've got to say, slow down a bit. All those little things that come in. So yes, you, you get very close to your sons. There is no time for anything, neither for your private life nor for any other things. It is an absolute devotion. In our sports, a coach and an athlete spend the maximum amount of time together, even more than with relatives. It's like in a family, everything is smooth and calm. Then there is an outburst, and then love after all. Here is the same, nothing is smooth. Coach gets tired, athlete gets tired. Something does not work out, a lot of repetition, and an athlete starts flying into a rage. We have great coaches who can retain us, who can rally us. To create a team is the most difficult task in our sports because we are all women. Each of us has her own character, her own opinion. And of course, it is difficult to reach an agreement. It is important to say, I'm sorry, in time. Yes, you should understand that you've crossed the line at some point, have yelled in the heat, have shouted. That also happens. Well, you've seen our trainings. In my opinion, synchronized swimming is one of the most harmonious sports. It develops all the physical qualities, the endurance, strength and flexibility, speed and coordination abilities. Swimming is, it's in our heart and it will always be in our heart and I think that's why we came back after retirement and to do this special event with the both of us together. We are agitated every time we are about to start the performance because if we feel everything is smooth, it means that something is missing. An athlete must always feel concerned, anxious, and must struggle. We are very happy that finally this important international competition is held at home. We loved a lot how we were greeted by the audience in Kazan. We have never experienced anything like that. Well, the audience is extraordinary. I mean, they are such fans of synchronized swimming. Such an emotional wave was going down from the stands and it motivated and helped the girls. In my childhood, when I was watching such athletes as Maria Kiseleva, Olga Brushninkia, it seemed to me that it was something incredible. I wanted to follow in their footsteps and get the same medals, emotions and glorify our country. Perhaps for some children, I have become an idol too. And whenever it's possible, if children try to come into our competitions and they want to take a picture, we don't refuse them in any way because we remember ourselves and realize that it is necessary. A little girl gave me a goldfish and it is like one of the mascots. I'm very happy, I'm very pleased. No, they helped me a great deal. Knowing that they in the stands and have my back makes a huge difference to me. If today I'm wearing this and he loses, I don't wear again. I don't wear this again if he loses today, if he was racing. No, 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 very suspicious. If this, even the shoes, if the shoes is no good, I'm, I'm losing. I'm not wearing the shoes again. I wear another shoes, I don't care. I cry, <laughs> I cry a lot, 
Um, that's why you never find me, because I usually just like to sit down and just cry um, when I'm happy. And, when I, and, and even when he doesn't do so well, then I don't cry. Then it's okay. I am very emotional. I cry a lot. <laughs> Oh, I'm on my feet and I'm getting really excited. I like think that we make eye contact, we really don't. Before my race, uh, I said I'm gonna swim the, the 10K today. And everyone like, we, we believe in you and you're so strong. And that gives you power to, to push yourself. When I was an athlete and participated in competitions, I did not care about the audience support. I was focused on my goals, but now I really need it. I think that the support helps an athlete to believe in himself and his strength. I don't see any other competition where after the event is finished, the last event, even if it's not the Russian on the podium, they still there applauding. I mean, this is unique because usually, immediately when they finish, everybody go. And then the last ceremony is with the empty stands. But what, that was not the case in Kazan. The people here really, they have a fantastic sport culture and respect for the athletes. Winning Russia or not winning Russia, they were happy. And their happiness passed to everybody. I think it's necessary to cheer for each sport, but high diving impresses me most of all. When they dive from a 27 meter height, they are just heroes. I don't know how to say it, even more than heroes. And I will cheer for those people who've chosen such kind of sports. To win the world championship is a dream of hundreds of thousands of people who have given their lives to sport, but only one becomes a world champion. It is incomprehensible, I'm afraid, even to come close to the edge of the tower and look down. But they jump from there, do incredible difficult dives. It takes my breath away when they fly down, and I can't calm down and relax until the very last moment when they appear on the surface of the water and show that everything is okay. The championships is a chance for me to, to challenge myself and put myself up against the best in the world. Absolutely, water is a friend. Um, however, landing off, uh, off 27 meters, it can feel like my enemy, but um, I love it. The relationship between high divers is, is very good. We're, we're a close-knit team. Um, there's not too many of us that, that travel around and, and we're all together. I see some of these divers more than I see my girlfriend, so it's, uh, it's definitely a, a good group and we're, we're happy for that. And uh, we kind of help each other out and uh, we obviously want to win, but we don't want to see anyone else hurt themselves. So uh, when, uh, when we're at competitions, we're, we help each other as much as we can. We are not just friends. In fact, I may say that these guys are my family because year by year, you and your comrades risk, if not your lives, but your health for sure. When we dive, when we're on top of the tower, we are fighters and everyone is fighting with all the others. But beyond sport, we are really like a family. I know all members of Diver's family. We visit each other's homes and that actually, we have just very warm family relationships. They become an uh, important uh, part of your life and uh, I think uh, it's important to, to be a part of the team because you learn uh, a lot from them and then they can learn from you. With competitors, friendship is possible uh, when the games don't start. Uh, during the games we are rivals, we play against each other but fair play and uh, after the game finishes we, we start again to be friends. You know. The friendship is possible. 
but when we go into water, when we have a, a match, there is no friendship. So I have very good friends, I play on the other side, but that one hour that we are playing match, there is no friendship, because everybody wants to win, and we do everything to win. Everyone has a, has a different role on the team, some big, some small, and uh, we all know that we can't do it without every piece of the puzzle. I think that responsibility is equally divided in a team. Everybody needs to do their part and everybody needs to work together. It's very different when you play team sport or, or when you're playing alone. I'm a, a member of team sport and it's very good. The first thing uh, in team sports is atmosphere or the feelings between the players that are in the team. In some situations that you don't have a day or maybe you don't play very well, your teammates are there to support you. And I like my team of Serbia because we are very good friends and we are together out of the sport also. For me, the team is like family and the family is the most important thing. We start in the morning at 9, so which means to be at the venue at 8. And then there are always events throughout the day, and that's just the event. Then you should put on top of that another three hours to edit the photos and send them out. So when it's... The thing is that our working day lasts 16, 16 hours. To do it for 15 days is really, really tough. The important thing is that the whole world receives good shots from this event which means not only mine but all my colleagues won and i'm very happy to see that a lot of russian photographers have come here photographers are always looking for is emotion us too we're trying to describe it in writing but photographers are always always looking for a moment that captures the emotion of what happened everyone likes to break stories of course this is part of the essence of journalism but now, because of the rise of the internet, it's more important actually to deliver context and analysis and to explain not just what happened, but why and how. Um, a journalist uh, has to be at the pool or wherever from morning until night. You talk to the athletes, you talk to the coaches, you talk to the staff, and then you have to sit down and write all that on deadline. It is my first time I have ever participated at such a great event. So in order to be on the same level as my rivals who have performed in the competition of the world level, before I trained really hard and did everything to be the best. The way to achieve my goal, first place at the competition. Diving's an amazing sport. It's very difficult. It's very on the day. Anything can happen on the day. It's not at all predictable. Um, so when you go into an event, you go into watch, watch an event or go to compete in an event, you never really know what's going to happen. Um, so that's, it's so exciting in that way. In diving, you always have fears because it's a sport that you never know and uh, you can uh, miss a dive only because of uh, a little less concentration or maybe you go with the uh, wrong food or something like this. I've had to sacrifice a lot um, learning how to dive and being within sport. You have to not go out with your friends, you have to make sure you eat the right things, you have to make sure that you're sleeping the right amount of hours, you have to look after your body. There's so many things that you have to give up, like unhealthy food you can't have, like you can't stay out late, so you have to make sure that you're in the best shape you can be. The more you get older, the more everything is getting harder. So, of course, I have to deal with tiredness, but moreover with injuries and uh, everything hurts uh, when you wake up. And uh, it's not easy, but um, we have a physiotherapist. We need a whole team to <laughs> make it move. I did a little mistake before, before the semifinals in warm-up. I did a bad hurdle and slipped off the board. 
I don't know why it happened. It's just bad luck and I couldn't help it to go on diving. I'm happy I still made finals so to get Olympic spot for Germany, but that was all I could do. Of course, it's sad to not to be in finals or not to dive the finals until the end. You know, the results, like I say, the results are second. Look, they're very important and it's nice to win. But if you don't win, what can you do? Life is like that. You know, in life you have to lose your, your, your looks. Look at me, I used to be beautiful. Look how ugly I am now. You understand, you have to lose your looks, your body, sometimes your mother, your father, your granny. So you have to learn to lose. So the winning is, is secondary because your life continues. If you're happy, then wonderful, you know. When the athlete fail, all team fail. All that seven persons fail. He's not alone. You must learn something or something in the engine is not working right. It, it's time to study more. It's time to get more information, get more knowledge. Athletes can get through defeat, I think, by learning what you did wrong. Um, you know, you have to first learn how to lose to become a winner. And, uh, you know, when you're winning, you're not always learning something. When you lose, you have to say, okay, today your opponent was better than you, but tomorrow I'm going to be better. So what? when you lose, you have to uh, put that thing behind you and uh, look forward. That is the only way that you can be better. We spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, working with the aim to win. And when we do, well, what we win, this gold medal. It's not only the result of my work, but the work of the team that stands behind it. A coach, psychologist, nutritionist, therapist, doctors, and only all of that together makes a dream come true. That moment when you hear the scores and realize that spectators are screaming, standing, stamping their feet, waving to you. It's a feeling of common victory, not our victory only, but a victory of our country. The most remarkable moment of this championship so far is coming here and you know, becoming the first male to win a gold medal at a world championship for synchronized swimming. You know, because it shows that all of our hard work has paid off. It was difficult to have a full-time job and, to full, and a full-time training during the day. So to come here and see that our hard work is paying off, um, it's a great accomplishment. Every time I get on the highest step of the podium, it's the most exciting and happy moment for me. At that moment, I feel that my efforts were not in vain. When, when, you, play, when you play a sport, you, you always have to respect the victory. If you don't respect, you cannot win. Uh, the belief in yourself and in your team is the most important thing when, when you play one match. First, uh, and I think on your question, uh, on second of all, I want to congratulate my team for being the world champions. And then Team Croatia, very good game, and we are very happy for about this all. This victory is a huge step for me towards our biggest goal, and it's just like getting stronger as a team. The victory uh, for us means, uh, obviously, that we're the best in the world, um, and we proved that, that you know over this. Uh, two, three week period and uh, I'm just so excited for the team, for the, the athletes that, that are on the team and all the hard work that they've put in and to be able to accomplish their goal and their dream um, and see them accomplish their goal and their dream gives me the, the greatest satisfaction in the world. The awarding ceremony was incredible and the medals we've got will be a lifelong memory of our victory. I want to be the best, so I train to be the best, and that victory ceremony is the greatest feeling ever. The medal itself is, uh, is great. I believe you put it in water and it changes color. So cool. <laughs> There's only one remarkable moment. That's seeing Chad climb out and being so happy and getting his gold medal.
Uh, the design of the medals is one of the best I've seen. Um, I have a few lying around at home and uh, this one is definitely uh, up there. It's very different, it's very unique and uh, it's going to hold a special place uh, in my heart and with, with memories. Each victory is, um, is just something that, that shows me that my hard work has, has paid off. Um, I um, have loved the sport of diving since a, a very young age and I've always wanted to be the best and, and to, to get that gold medal just, uh, just shows me that all the, the hard work that I've, uh, I've done uh, is worth, worth it. The victory is the embodiment or, well, the result of a huge work that we are doing together with athletes, coaches, specialists with regions. Each time you achieve victory, it means that we've worked pretty well. Victory is everything. It's the end of a great job, numerous trainings, work disputes and confrontations. So of course, it is a moment of triumph when victory is achieved. So you want it to happen again and again. It is very important that we have victories of the country, Republic, and each of us should achieve our own victories. We will not develop and move forward without victories. Dear friends, a great feast of sport is coming to an end, and I would like to sincerely thank all of you. It's because of you that the brilliant, incredible and unforgettable event has become a success. I need to say this is the, the remarkable moments or what I see is the people. Yes, the people are really very open and to communicate, to speak, that you can be proud of that. People are very good. I'm very enjoying in this town. From Kazan, I will take a mascot, Alsu, with me. To be honest, I have a separate shelf for medals and a separate shelf for mascots. And of course, Snow Leopard Alsu will occupy its honorable place because the World Championships in our home country is the most important event. Generally speaking, every major sporting event means a lot to us. It is a development of the region, popularization of sports, passion of youth. Today it means the existence and development of modern infrastructure. We are sure that it also is an opportunity for us to show our country and how open it is. the best ever world championship in the history of FINA. Kazan helped FINA to go to the other level. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who contributed to this. And I will not be surprised in one day, Kazan will put the bid to organize the Olympic Games. That will not surprise me. <laughs>